Hi guys, Mac here again. So after my disastrous experience with that OWC Thunder Bay, which I did a video on recently, I still have this issue of needing a faster storage solution. So I've gone a slightly different route and that's what we have today. So what this is, is a QNAP NAS. Now the difference with this one is that it already comes with 10 gig ethernet and it's also got two Thunderbolt 3 ports. So let's get this out, we'll get it tested and hopefully I'll have a little bit more success with this one than I did with the OWC unit. And there we go, there it is. So on the back we have a couple of 1 gig ethernet ports down the bottom there and also a 10 gig port at the top and the two Thunderbolt ports are at the front. Now I'm not sure what, how the Thunderbolt ports are configured, I'm pretty sure they'd be as network connections rather than direct attached storage. But let's get this set up and we'll have a look at the performance and like I say, I hope I have a better experience with this one. Let's start with a real world example. So what you're looking at here is me copying one of my virtualization sets on the left here up to the Synology over one gig ethernet and on the right to the QNAP over 10 gig ethernet. Now the QNAP completes it in 10 minutes, 47 seconds. The Synology takes 26 minutes and 10 seconds. Now, just to be clear, this is a comparison between 10 gig ethernet and one gig ethernet, not really a comparison between the QNAP and Synology. But this is the real driver for me to upgrade because I was finding that I was constantly having to take longer breaks while I waited for my virtualization sets to copy up to my NAS. But obviously now, if I can get it down to 10 or 15 minutes, I go for a coffee, come back, and it's done, and I'm ready to go. Anyway, these tests are just a raw throughput. I haven't at this point set up any SSD caching or any of the Q tier stuff. Let's move on. We'll have a look at this configuration of this specific unit and some other things. Let's have a look at the unit and I'll show you how I've actually built this particular device. So this is the one that I've bought. It is the 453BT3 with eight gig of RAM. I bought it for about a thousand pounds. That was including sales tax. I'll show you the uh, real figures in a moment. There are cheaper versions. So for example, if we have a look at this one here, this one is only 600 pounds, but there is a fundamental difference between this one and it's not just the amount of memory. It's the fact that this unit here, the cheaper one, doesn't have your 10 gig interface in there. It doesn't have the Thunderbolt 3 slots and also on the 10 gig PCI interface there's two M2 slots this unit doesn't have those so for the 400 pound uplift you're getting a 10 gig interface two M2 slots you're also getting the two Thunderbolt 3 ports so that's where the price differentiation comes from so what else is in this unit well let's have a look at the drives well for the drives for the purposes of this demo it has four Western Digital Gold eight terabyte units in they are approximately about 250 pounds in the UK now also I upgraded the RAM so it has an upgrade to 16 gig of RAM in there now the specs seem to say that it can only support up to 8 gig but there's a lot of evidence out there of people upgrading and using them at 16 gig so I've taken the risk of upgrading to 16 gig and it seems to work just fine I've certainly loaded up the memory so it's using it and it's been absolutely stable so what else have I done well I've also fitted two m2 500 gig SSDs which I'm currently using for Q tier so I'll show you those in a few minutes now one final thing that I fitted to this unit is one of these now it always amazes me that you have expensive bit of kit and what they do is they put really cheap horrible fans in them I found this unit particularly noisy from the fan and I'll show you that in a few minutes so what I've actually done is I've replaced the fan with a higher quality one and it is far quieter but like I said I'll show you that in a moment so let's move across and we'll have a look at the actual pricing of this unit so what I have here is the price before VAT or sales tax and then you can see the gross price uh, on the right here so this is not a cheap NAS at all so the NAS itself cost me a thousand pounds those eight terabyte drives come in at about another thousand pounds there was a RAM upgrade which wasn't particularly expensive at about 60 pounds and then these two SSDs which came in as about 120 the fan itself was quite cheap at about 16 pounds. The SSDs, by the way, only supports up to six gigabit per second. So don't go spending extra on some really high performance ones. You won't really get the benefit of it. And what I found as well with the high performance ones that I had is they'd overheat in the chassis quite quickly. So these two crucial ones that I have in there at the moment, they seem to be operating at a pretty reasonable temperature with the cooling that's available in this chassis. They are also pretty easy to fit. So the whole unit comes in at around 2,200 pounds, including VAT or about 
1800 pounds without VAT so it is quite an expensive unit but you have to look at your use case for it and for me it was all about the amount of time that I was losing for that copying over one gig. Let's have a look at some of the specific performance elements of this then. Let's start we'll just do a Blackmagic disk speed test. Now one thing's worth noting, I have configured encryption for all of the volumes on the unit, so the speeds are probably about 10% less than I get when I tested it without the encryption configured. And there we go. And the, these performance figures that I'm seeing here, they are fairly consistent. I tend to see a, between about 270 to 300 megabytes per second write speed. And the read speed seems to average at around 600 megabytes per second. That is all very acceptable. And it, it's quite a boost up from my previous devices. So just for the comparison's sake, let's have a look at the performance against my Synology NAS as well. So let me just select the drive on my Synology and just bear in mind, like I say, this is more a test of 10 gig Ethernet than it is really the Synology stroke QNAP stuff. There we go. So actually what we're seeing there is, is the natural limits of one gig Ethernet rather than us getting close to the performance of the actual Synology unit themselves. So what else do I use this NAS for apart from storage? Because just like the Synology, it's capable of supporting various different apps. So one of the things I use it for is virtualization. So for example, I have a domain controller configured on there. There it is. Now, the performance of it is not going to set the world on fire, but if you do have a couple of VMs that you just need running in the background, so for example, this one's a fairly low spec. Let's have a look. I've got two cores allocated and two gig of RAM, and it's running Windows Server 2016, and all it is is a domain controller and a DNS server for my internal system. So for stuff like that, it works really well. So what we're looking at here is the QNAP on the left and the Synology on the right. As you can see, they are very, very similar. If I had a comment, I would say that setting up and configuring the QNAP is a little bit more difficult than the Synology. And if I had a bit of advice, it would be make sure you understand the volume configuration that you want to deploy on your QNAP because I didn't really and I kind of rushed ahead and I copied my data on there. And then I realized later that actually I'd set up my volumes incorrectly. And because of that, I had to completely remove the volumes and re reset them up again, which is very irritating and time consuming. So if we have a quick look on my QNAP, you can see I've got a single thick volume set up, which has all the four eight terabyte drives in, but I've also considered this Q-tier application. Now what Q-tier does, it's a bit like tiered storage. What it will do is it will copy down data that you use quite a lot to the SSDs rather than you accessing them from the slower drives. Now it's difficult to actually ascertain the real performance benefits from that. I'm sure it really does make a difference, but you can see down here that it's got about 387 gigabytes of information on the ultra high speed SSD set, and the rest of the data is sitting on the slower capacity tier. So like I say, very similar to the Synology, I've got things like the virtualization configuration, which is, you know, if you are familiar with the Synology units, it is pretty easy to configure. So what's my take on the unit? Well, it is a very capable unit and obviously I, I'm gonna get real benefit from the performance boost from 10 gig ethernet and those Thunderbolt ports. So I'm really pleased with it. It is of course a little bit pricey, however. One thing I did wanna quickly look at is the configuration of the network on this unit because I think my network configuration is probably a little bit unusual and it's worth bearing in mind that the Thunderbolt ports, they are configured as network ports. They're not Thunderbolt 3 direct attached storage. So you're naturally limited to uh, a similar performance to 10 gig ethernet. What I'll do is I'll pull up a diagram and let's have a, a quick look at how this unit is actually configured. This is quite a hastily put together network diagram. So I just wanna demonstrate how the Thunderbolt 3 connection is actually treated. So this is also a little bit simplified version of how my network is set up. So my IMAP Pro connects into my 10 gig switch and the QNAP connects into this 10 gig switch as well. So the performance demos I've been showing you are over that 10 gig connection. The Synology is actually connected from the one gig switch over here on the left, but I have link aggregation going on there as well. Now, what is particularly interesting is the connection over Thunderbolt 3. It is a network connection. It isn't a direct attached storage type connection. So as you can see, each end has an IP address and, and you need to treat it like that. The QNAP does come with some software, so it will automate the whole piece around that. I don't like using that sort of software. I'd rather configure it myself and have my DNS set up appropriately so I can use it without having to use that third party software but just be aware of that also of course Thunderbolt 3 networking is limited to 10 gigabit as well so it's pretty much the same performance over Thunderbolt as I was getting over the 10 gig Ethernet 
So the final thing I just want to quickly show you was the point I made earlier about fan noise. Let me show you what I'm talking about there. Now trying to demonstrate fan noise over a video is notoriously hard because of course you're not going to have any subjective reference point to understand how loud it is but I'll give it a go. So what I'm going to show you first is just the sound of the unit when it's under load before I change the fan. So it is louder than both my Mac Mini and my iMac Pro, so when it is under load I do hear it because it sits over my right shoulder. It's certainly not something I'd want in a bedroom or something like that. Now there are fan profiles you can configure. This is all configured on the normal mode. There is a performance mode which seems to ramp the fans up really quickly. And there's also a quiet mode which, you know, the fans are on far quieter but then your hard disks end up at kind of 45 to 50 degrees. Now let me try and demonstrate the sound once I'd actually changed the fan over. Now I'm not sure if you're going to be able to tell the difference there on video, it is very difficult to demonstrate. What I will say though is with the unit just sat behind me to my right, replacing the fan has made a lot of difference. The audio levels now are pretty much about the same as my Mac Mini in terms of fans. What I am going to do though is get some sound editing uh, material just sat under the units because when you hear those drives under load they, they are quite loud but to be fair they were just as loud as that in the Synology as well. So, well done for getting this far, assuming you actually have. Reviewing products like this can be a little bit dry and a little bit hard to get through, but what I try and do is focus on the information that I'm interested in when I'm researching these products. There's tons of things that I haven't touched on about this product. There's the USB one copy, for example, which is really handy for injecting all the stuff from my cameras. There's the usage of all the USB ports. There's the Plex support. There's all kinds of things that I could have got into, but I didn't, thankfully. One thing I was going to include, which I think people will find interesting, is the power consumption, which I'll pop up here. On the website, they say the average usage is about 38 watts. My experience is higher than that. It seems to be averaging between about 45 and 55 watts, but that, of course, could be the drives that I'm using. And that gives me equivalent cost of 24 by 7 operation of about £60 a year which I, I don't think is too shabby and I'm okay with that. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up now. If you do have any specific questions about the unit, drop them in the comments below and I will try and answer them for you. Until next time.